Hello everyone. Have you ever been interested in art? Have you have you heard of acrylics? If you have, keep watching this video. Hello everyone, my name is Edward. In this video I'm going to show you quick time lapse of sea wave painting and also how to use brushes when you paint with acrylics and a small tutorial. In the end of my video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not. But for now, enjoy my video. As always, I'm starting with a white panel to paint. The main colors I'm going to use for the sea are primary blue, ultramarine blue and I'm also adding black and also titanium white for the details. Uh, if I'm going to paint water or water scene or wave, of course I also want to mention turquoise blue, uh, which I'm going to use later on. And here I'm starting with the primary blue by adding black to it to get that nice darker tone of the blue. So here I just have an idea of what I'm doing, just uh, painting some lines, some easy lines and uh, kind of doodles. <laughs> as I mentioned in my other videos as well, acrylic paint is fast drying. So if you paint with water, you need to be a little bit quick because it dries fast. So if you have in so much detailed work, so you might mess it up. Here I'm painting my second tone for the wave, which was primary blue and then turquoise blue and then I'm adding black to the primary blue again for the sea wave. I'm using titanium white for, for uh, that could be sunlight let's say let's imagine and uh, yeah titanium white is a very effective paint if you especially paint it. glossy or matte. When the time uh, right the varnish itself can be removed and the painting revarnish to make to make it look uh, as good as new. So this is the final appearance of my painting. I'm so happy it was pretty much easier for me. I hope it was for you as well. And uh, now I'm going for our small acrylic paint tutorial. So in one of my sides I'm going to use the water and in my other side I'm going to use the flow improver or the so-called acrylic medium. So one of the fav one of my favorite techniques that I learned was uh, to always cover the, cover the canvas, tone the ground we call. So we would tone the ground by taking a little bit, little bit of uh, paint and adding some water. Um, actually quite a bit of water 
what I didn't know until much later was that this technique is actually under binding the paint film. Basically all paint is a pigment plus a binder. So if you don't have a binder, you don't have enough to hold the pigment color onto your canvas. So here how it works. We have those these large spherical acrylic molecules in a paint film with water and pigment but what has to happen to make stable paint film is when the water evaporates all those molecules end up interlocking into a stable paint film they make a honeycomb like structure so it's important to hold the pigment here you see the difference used medium and water after it dries out so here for the tutorial I'm using number 6 flat shader and later on I'm going to use the oval brush and also number 12. Say we got our little sky and you want uh, some background misty trees. So here what I usually do, kind of do these uh, overlapping strokes, kind of just uh, raise out the tree. Literally uh, can just hit it down uh, using kind of a uh, backside of the brush. That makes sense. Uh, just like that, and uh, you get instant canopy of uh, soft trees. Uh, this is like a background maneuver. Uh, you wouldn't do this as a, much as in a four value. You can do you can do it on a foreground, and just uh, add more details, and uh, just kind of uh, scrub in some mist with this brush would darken up a little bit. Uh, this is not a painting part of the video in a way, it's just to show you the brush strokes that uh, I usually do. And uh, also you can do that with uh, black or white, it doesn't matter. So basically just your quick and easy background trees. And now I'm going to show you the oval brush, but uh, in order to do that, I have to put some paint down on the canvas because we can't really paint well with uh, the oval brush. Here, I'm just gonna lop on some slipper and <laughs> don't even know what, what I was gonna say. Yeah, so here, adding some white paint. You can do that with any brush, by the way. Um, just uh, slippery, wet paint that just looks terrible. So basically most of the people, especially beginners, having issues with painting sky or clouds. So, uh, and uh, this is where the oval brush shines. And uh, this is one of my favorite things to do, just uh, take this brush and uh, set it down. I like to use just uh, the top of the brush and uh, go in circles. Now, a uh, cloud like this can be uh, made you know, without blending, I do that sometimes, but uh, when uh, you're learning or you want to get a little more refined look to your painting, try the blender brush, gets you some really soft edges uh, with minimal effort. So reach for the blender brush or oval brush if you're ever worried about something that is looking a little harsh. Now I'm moving to some um, tree paints. And uh, I'm just gonna grab that Phytalo Green flat shader brush. So kind of one of my favorite things to do, kind of get these larger, I would say, uh, mid-ground trees. And the brushes, same, uh, same difference. Yeah, it's just tapping stroke. And uh, especially as I was learning and I wasn't as comfortable as with uh, other brushes and other techniques. This technique was so easy just stabbing it and uh, they look so much more detailed and if you did uh, with a larger brush, you know, they give you bigger limes. These uh, have smaller limes. They look more detailed, a little slower, but just a little, you know, small amount to me. It's uh, well, well worth it. You know, you don't have to stop there and I slide down and give yourself a little tree trunk or two just slide up uh, to get a couple of nice uh, little bits there it's just uh, that tapping there is no sliding up uh, in the canopy area that's probably my favorite uh, thing to show you with uh, 
filbert brush all right i'm just uh, finishing up here in a bit so here i'm kind of join join them together both trees so it's much easier to reshape it in the end but you know that depends on the tree that you paint that could be also a single tree and uh, next i'm going to use my fan brush um, here a big mess pretty good looking mess huh uh, fan brush is a good brush for uh, making for painting grass and literally you can uh, grab the fan brush and uh, push it upward it was very easy for me to decide uh, you know what my favorite technique is uh, grass with the fan brush it's easy for me to decide because uh, just just look at the res result just look at this result uh, you get under I'm not I'm not certainly uh, the person that stands out there and says you painting is super easy you you have to practice it you know it, it doesn't just happen automatically except this I would uh, say uh, you don't really need to practice have an experience uh, this is just works it's funny it's the only technique that I know that it works without really any practice to speak of and uh, so I had I had to show it to you isn't that cool Now we're moving to uh, three-quarter flat brush and uh, I'm using just a little bit of brown and black. One of my favorite things to do with this brush is uh, I think it just really shines when it comes to painting uh, rocks. Uh, I, I just do it over here. I'm just gonna think of keeping things consistent but uh, I just wanted to show you how to do a couple of rocks now this brush works I mean every brush works uh, for so many different things so it's so hard to do with uh, this video but so many people have asked uh, you know about specific on the brushes so I decided to to use this brush so it's a cluster of rocks I guess in the ocean or um, somewhere I just want to show you how to highlight it now. I'm just uh, using a light green, mixing cadmium yellow with primary blue and then adding some white to it. So uh, just what happens when you just light over a little with that beautiful sunlight right on the top of the rocks. Kind of uh, got a grassy color, uh, maybe add some a uh, little bit red to change it up. So basically that was a technique for highlighting, just uh, tapping on the top of the object, whatever you paint, that could be rocks, that could be a different object, just uh, depending on the sight and point of the view and also sunlight. So uh, just uh, painting some uh, lighter tones and uh, that's it, I think. And uh, one last thing that I just want to mention, all those things you can use also in oil paint, not just acrylics, that was acrylics, but you can also uh, try that on oil paint and see how it goes and let me know, comment below. So uh, that was the end of my small tutorial and also of my painting video. I hope you enjoyed because I actually really enjoyed it. And uh, if you like my art, if you like my content, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not and uh, stay creative and never quit on yourself.